Hello, SpongeX here, along with my friends um, H. Hog and Stefu. And Hello. we're going to talk about the upcoming uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie. They just revealed the first trailer today. And um, the movie looks really bizarre. And um, so maybe some purists of this movie will be, like, absolutely disappointed. For me, though, I'm intrigued. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's certainly... <laughs> intriguing is definitely the word. <laughs> Uh, so, um, the funny thing is, I've had a concept for a movie like this for so long. I wanted to see something like this happen. Um, my first thought was, if they ever made a Roger Rabbit sequel, I'd want the movie to be just like how the plot of this one seems to be turning out, where yeah. old cartoons are fading away, and it's like, if you want to make it big, you got to get rebooted in the CGI. And that's exactly what they're <laughs> doing with this Chip and Dale movie. It's really meta, where Chip and Dale are um, basically... Um, like 30 years after their success of their TV show, everything fell apart. And it seems to be like Dale was the reason for it. <laughs> that just feels very suitable to the show. Blame it on the goofball. <laughs> Dale was always the screw up and kind of like the self-absorbed one. So it makes sense that he would be the one to kind of break up the team. But none of this is confirmed. But it's kind of funny how he went through like CGI plastic surgery, basically. So He's getting with the times, and um, it's like the others aren't impressed with it. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's like good commentary on those who either change their skin color or sometimes even their gender, maybe. Like, you know, it can be a pretty touchy subject. Some people understand, some won't. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so the movie looks like it's going to be very nostalgic, and it might even be a sequel to Roger Rabbit in a way, like, because Roger even makes a flat-out cameo in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so um, I like I like the blending of the art styles. Uh, so uh, Chip is not traditionally hand drawn. He's computer animated, but they did a good job at trying to make him look hand drawn. Like you look at still images and you would easily be fooled that it's um, hand drawn. Yeah. Tell it Rocky and Bullwinkle. And Dale, yeah, that is, that is definitely a good comparison. The Rocky and Bullwinkle film. I've seen yeah. a lot of people make comparisons to the Tom and Jerry movie as well, but. Yeah. They're like, it's a blend between Tom and Jerry and the album and the Chipmunks movie. <laughs> uh, so, um, for those, some might be upset, though, that they recast the characters. Um, and personally, I'm fine with Chippendale's voice. Like, everyone's mad they're not high-pitched. It's like, honestly, I think that would get kind of annoying after a while. <laughs> I can understand why they didn't go with the high-pitched voices. Although, I have to say, as much as I like John Mulaney as an actor and an artist... I can't get used to him, his voice coming out of Chip. It's really jarring. Well, it's funny when you realize Chip was the same voice as Gadget. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. And so, um, yeah, um, they definitely were very shy of showing footage of Gadget, I noticed. Um, however, I did notice um, there was a shot of her. In, um, so it looks like she's still um, hand-drawn. I, I remember seeing a shot where she was in, um, yeah, right here. Do you see it? Oh, uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. it, so it, I'm guessing if anything, she shows up for the climax of the movie. If anything, so what? What's her role going to be? We don't know, but it seems like Monterey is the one responsible for bringing them back together. And it, it looks like his life went downhill a bit. Um, his mm -hmm. cheese addiction got worse. <laughs> uh, there was a bit of a write-up they had to go along with the trailer. I don't know if you've read that. Like a sort of a, a plot synopsis. Yeah, I remember seeing that. And so it's like, I want, it's like, that's interesting, but I'm not sure if it's true. And this trailer confirmed it was true. Even the Roger Rabbit cameo showed up. And Yeah, because it, it mentioned something about like a former castmate mysteriously disappearing. And I'm guessing from the lack of appearances in the trailer that it must mm. probably be Gadget. Well, I'm glad that uh, showing that she is piloting the ranger plane and what looks like a climax, it's safe to assume that um, she won't be like a twist villain or anything, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of left her she was, but then again, it would, it would kill her character. Um, <laughs> we also got a glimpse of Zipper, and he was in that same scene. It showed him holding a match, like he was about, he probably lit the rocket that Dale was on. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I like this picture here where. Uh, either Chip or Dale is looking over a picture, and you see how they're in front of Disney World. <laughs> That's adorable. Probably Dale because of the CG hands. But yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, duh. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and yeah, this Chip and Dale lunchbox here from the beginning. And That's cute. This well. picture, this is like the last thing you see before the logo appears, and I'm wondering if that's supposed to be Fat Cat or something, but 
he turned into some kind of monstrosity of different art styles. So you see he has like the torso of what appears to be Quasimodo. The I left arm was looks like Hood. the left arm looks like Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> yeah. I thought the torso was Robin Hood's, but I'm not sure. Um, it's like if it is Robin Hood, it's really buff looking, but um Yeah, and also the head kind of resembles Marie from the Aristocats, I'm not sure. Except like there is a bow on top, but the head the color looks more like fat cat, but it's yeah. like someone gave him a makeover or something. I don't know. But the right arm, I want to say, what the hell is that? Uh, it almost reminds me of the arm cannon that Barrett had from Final Fantasy VII. But clearly <laughs> this was a parody of Jurassic Park with the yeah. T-Rex. <laughs> so what does the banner say? Welcome Prince Jehu? Yeah, uh, Prince, uh, yeah, Prince Jolly or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so mm. My Little Pony is going to make a cameo. Yeah. So this, it this shows just... that uh, it's not – so just like Roger Rabbit, it's not just going to have Disney Easter eggs. They got the rights for some other things to show Actually, maybe roll my eyes thinking, oh, great. Now bronies want to go see this, see this because of this. <laughs> and here's the Roger Rabbit cameo. Coming, coming out of the woodworks. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, three that's Little cute. Pigs. And a, yeah. I'm not familiar for his character, but at the left, there's like some – like MC something and some uh, – you know. Cat. Scat Cat, yeah. And I'm not familiar with that, but apparently others were. <laughs> but yeah. So really so, uh, from a music, reference there. It's from a music video with Paul Abdul. Opposites yeah. track. Uh, I knew like you and uh you and Steph were gonna get a laugh out of that. <laughs> 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 Sounds like they got David Tennant to voice him because it may point out that's what it sounded like with his laugh there. But Yeah. Well I mean, obviously since um uh, what's his name? Uh, doesn't is no longer alive. Um, Alan Young. Alan Young. That's you know, um, I like I might have to do a comic of this someday, but uh, I remember like a, uh, I can never look at Zipper the same way. All I can see is like a um, Zipper like taking off like his face, and all of a sudden you see Winnie the Pooh underneath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's wearing, the a, red he's wearing shirt. wearing a mask yeah. the whole time. <laughs> With a little red shirt on, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But. And then I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a fat cat, but someone's dressed as Prince Ali flying the magic carpet, chasing Chip and Dale. And yeah. so it looks too big to be Monterey unless it's the camera angle. But I'm guessing that's either fat cat or possibly even Pete. <laughs> or maybe just Aladdin himself, but let himself go or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, like... uh, the gloves throw me off because the fat cat wear gloves. <laughs> Like several years later, he's about as ch uh, chubby as the no. Sultan himself. <laughs> um, I do like I how um, I do like how Chip got his outfit from accidentally running through like an Indiana Jones a merchandise thing. Apparently, yeah. well, apparently he must have got like a doll sized one or something. But um, <laughs> was, uh, I, I mean, like I remember when I reviewed Rescue Rangers, I mentioned how I kind of wish they delved more into the backstory of these characters. Like it would have been cool if you saw them suit up. And so, okay, we kind of got it here. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like this movie looks like it'll be a lot of fun. Can't say if it'll be good or not, but it, it has me intrigued, though. I'm actually excited mm. to see this. Me too. Yeah. Now, come on, where's our DuckTales film, you bastards? <laughs> you already got one years ago. I don't care. There's also some interesting, like, appearances during that Comic-Con scene, like some people in cosplay and some, like, uh, even some Warner Brothers. Um, I saw someone looks like, like Borat. <laughs> Yeah, and somebody dressed as Batman as well. Well, I saw, like, the bat symbol on someone's shirt. Oh, well, yeah, Batman. I, I can see someone turning this into a meme. Nobody wants a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants a reboot like Gaston. I'm not going to lie, though. I hope that this su success does, like, this does turn successful and leads to an actual reboot in the end. So, like, the, this yeah. somehow ties into... But, uh, yeah, it's great to see a movie that's, like, a love letter to animation of all genres, because... Um, you know, I always want to see a modern take of Roger Rabbit where it acknowledges that there's many different kinds of animation now. It's not just 2D and 3D, but it's like um, different styles, different methods. Heck, you even have anime characters in this. Like, Any yeah. concerns? No recognizable ones, though, but it, it looks like they're, they're acknowledging that there's a different like uh, race or um, genre of animations. And so it's interesting mm. to see how this movie could tackle it. And Not to mention the whole take on the era of the Uncanny Valley, like, yeah, like Polar just, like, Express like, anime type yeah, anime. Like, di yeah, Disney just like took a shit at like uh, the Robert Zemeckis films. And <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The image movers. And, um, any and they nailed it. And cats as well. 
Any right concerns? when I say it, the picture of cat, the cat pops up. <laughs> any concerns at all with this film, do you think? Like, anything that's going to, like, just wreck it for us? Um, so, yeah, it's like, um, so, yeah, it, the movie's still a big mystery. You know, it's like we don't know what to expect from it except for a few Easter eggs here and there. And um, But I, I'm really looking forward to this. So, um I'm glad to see that um, not everyone's hating on it. Like, there are people complaining about it. They're complaining over the – mostly the voice acting is the biggest thing I've heard people complain <laughs> Honestly, about. Honestly, my biggest cringe moment was literally at the end with the freaking Seth Rogen laugh. <laughs> <laughs> my biggest concern is going to be the um, usage, probably the usage of memes and, and leak speak, if they use any. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I can definitely say from what I've seen, this looks more enjoyable than like the crossover stuff they did for Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yeah. (laughs) I remember kind of rolling my eyes during the trailer. Even it's like I wanted to be excited that they're bringing all these characters together, but all they're doing was making fun of PC culture with like Disney princesses. And it's like, yeah, screw that. (laughs) And what it kind of feels like to me, like, so you had Ralph Breaks the Internet, and then later on you got. Uh, Warner Brothers releasing Space Jam 2 going like, oh, hey, look at all the cameos we can do. And now Disney is going back like, oh, you sweet summer childs, look what we yeah. can do. Pretty much. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I was hoping that Space Jam A New Legacy would kind of have some commentary on how cartoons aren't loved anymore. And unfortunately, no, they did not go that direction. So Sorry. I'm glad to see this movie is doing what that movie didn't do. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just crazy that like it looks like Disney's even throwing shade at themselves for once. <laughs> Are you gonna say um, so? You know, it's like they're they might be the villains of this movie. Who knows? <laughs> I was saying, I think Space Jam just threw all those cameos in for good measure. Like, oh look, it's the mask. Oh look, Fred Flintstone. Yeah. I thought they were fun though, but I like how here it feels more like it. It actually works with the movie. They're not yeah. just there to be in the background. It, it's like you're actually going to see these characters interact with each other possibly and. Yeah. Um, I, I like how someone also compared this to the Amazing World of Gumball because of all the different um, uh, art styles and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, I, I can see how that is a comparison. Yeah. Well, uh, it's like if that one image of Fat Cat, like if that is Fat Cat, like merged with different characters, that would be funny if like it was because he wanted to be like the he wanted to be the most like feared animated thing ever. So he wanted to combine himself with all these different animation genres. And then he turns yeah. into that monstrosity. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Also, I saw like, um, it was a brief flash, but I saw like a C- CG animated version of, I think it was Newt, his, his name, like uh, one of Fat Cat's cronies. Well, the I, did, lizard. I thought it was a snake. Um, there was a snake with sunglasses. And... Yeah, it was like a li- sort of, some sort of reptile with a hat. I it think it, it looks like small. a cartoonier version of Rattlesnake Jake from Rango. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, that, could, that could have been as well, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to have any like more Saturday morning cartoon cameos. Mm-hmm. Well, they definitely... Scrooge is confirmed, and... Um... I mean, uh, it looks like, like unlike Roger Rabbit, where that focused on just classic characters, we could see anything happen here. I mean, I mean, My Little Pony, if that shows up, what else can show up? That killed it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, yeah. ponies, fucking hell. I, it, it makes you wonder if they have some kind of deal going on with, like, other studios, a bit like they had with Roger Rabbit itself. Mm-hmm. Like some kind of, yeah, some kind of back and forth deal with sort of, yeah. Like, sort of it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see any Warner Bros. characters, though, but it's still interesting to know that um, there are some liberties that could be taken with this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, it comes out May 20th, and I'm definitely excited. I hope it is not a disappointment. and oh, We don't wow. have to rush to theaters to see this. It'll be on Disney Plus, luckily. Mm-hmm. Comes um, so too. anything more to add before we wrap up the video or what are you saying stuff just now it comes out my dad's birthday ah uh, oh mm-hmm. no longer here um well uh, i got two more things to add so it, it does make me wonder though who is going to be voicing um both monterey jack and um uh, gadget because uh, Monterey Jack, it's like the voice sounds kind of faithful to the original, but uh, you did see like a, um, a list of credits pop up at the end, but they didn't confirm who was who. So I didn't know if J.K. Simmons' name was there, but they didn't show like who he played at all. I don't think I didn't hear his voice at all. Uh, I saw some, hang on, I'm not sure where. 
Well, uh, one thing I'm glad about is that it looks like this movie's going to focus on cartoons. It didn't have any live action stars, you know, steal the spotlight, luckily. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unless you count Seth Rogen as. <laughs> 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 Something tells me he won't have a big role, though. He's probably just there for laughs. And they just wanted to put his name out there to lure people into it. But <laughs> Yeah. Um, but uh, so um, gadget, that's a big mystery though. I I think I only know it's like one female actress listed on that credit, so it makes me wonder is that supposed to be gadget? Never heard of her though. But um, apparently I always thought like a funny idea for. I always knew they were gonna recast the characters if they did this. So um, I I always thought it would be funny if they got Amy Poehler to voice her. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Amy, um, if, if Sonic ever gets a third film of Amy Rose, I would love for Kate Nakushi to play Amy. Oh, um, huh. yeah. Um, she could do it. Yeah. Also, apparently, a uh, um, Monterey Jack is being voiced by Eric Banner. Hmm. Uh, who is that? I'm not sure if I've heard of that. Uh, Eric Banner. Let me look him up. Also, apparently, it's Tris McDale reprising a role as uh, Gadgets. And this. Oh, that's awesome! So that's probably oh, why yes. they didn't, that's probably why they didn't show her. They wanted to surprise people. <laughs> It's like right when you hear open her mouth, it's it's like, oh, that's all you heard her do was kind of, you kind of heard her laugh like when they were taking a group photo, and that was it. But oh my god, yes, they got Tris McNeil back. Yes. Oh, sorry, uh, it's not Eric 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 Banna. Mm -hmm. Eric Banna. Um, I have no idea who the bumhole is. But funny coincidence happened today. So uh, two days ago, I, I started getting into that Disney Heroes game, and today I just unlocked Gadget right after the trailer. <laughs> Yo, I have Gadget. She's adorable. Because I, I had enough credits, um, and she was available on the store. So it's like, okay, might as well. Just, just suitable timing right after I saw the trailer. My most powerful fighter so far, I think, is Darkwing Duck. For me, it's Pete. Oh, uh, Eric Bana was... Um... Anchor, one of the sharks on Finding Nemo. Uh, uh, the hammerhead shark. <laughs> well, he did kind of have an Australian accent, so good casting. I, like, I remember, like, you didn't hear him much in this trailer, but I thought, okay, that sounds like him. Close enough. <laughs> and he was the Hulk in the 2003 Hulk movie. <laughs> okay, uh, a good and a bad. <laughs> yeah, that's why I mentioned the Finding Nemo first. <laughs> But from what I heard, he sounds suitable, though. It, it's yeah. almost like uh, Peter Cullen never left. <laughs> Speaking of Disney and Disney Afternoon shows, when are they going to release the reboot of Darkwing Duck? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, that's probably why Seth Rogen's in this movie, because um, he is uh, behind that reboot. So, Oh, my like, God! Seth I Rogen's behind a Darkwing Duck mm -hmm. Apparently, he was a fan of that, I guess. <laughs> In DuckTales, you get Negaduck, Duck, but he never comes back. I wonder if that's like a little nod that's coming to the reboot of, D of Darkwing Duck. <laughs> yeah, like because they didn't confirm if it'll be a continuity. I, I imagine it would be though, because it did leave a lot of loose ends that could easily carry over into its own show. Like, and, you know what, let's just bring back DuckTales. I I could just imagine though, if anything, they'd probably change the art style, maybe. But I wouldn't be surprised if they continued the story from DuckTales with this reboot. But um, and so, like I said, hopefully Chip and Dale can get a reboot as well. Um, like, I'd even be fine if they use the the um, semi CG hand drawn art style they use for the characters at the beginning. That'd be fine, but it, it, I do have to wonder what will happen to the characters in the end because there can go like one or two ways. Well, one or one of three ways. So either like the gang all gets back together, but Dale's still CGI. They all convert to CGI, or Dale converts back to his old self, or you know, it could go in any of those three directions. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Just as long as I don't go back into the cringy style of that new cartoon. Mm -hmm. I, I never even watched it. I just saw like the art style in the first trailer. It's like, nope. Speaking of which, like, um, I, it's like I wanted to give it a chance, but it's like I just got like past the intro and I said, nope. But apparently yeah. there's a new Alice in Wonderland cartoon, but it's for preschoolers. Ugh. And so something about oh. Alice having like um, a kitchen in Wonderland. And what so it's like I just saw like the title. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I didn't even give the show a chance. It's like it's one of those like shows that talks down to kids and it's like fuck ah. it. <laughs> I just know it's like they added it to I'm like, what the hell is this? Um some new Alice in Wonderland show and it's like nope. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have been interested, but it's like nope. I'm not watching this. This is torture. Neither am I. It looks like some kind of mobile game. Mm. It it was cringy. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess that's all we have to say about Chip and Dale then. So we don't know what to expect from it, but ho- hoping for the best. <laughs> Some kind of Roger Rabbit frickery anyway. <laughs> I don't care. I'm, I'm freaking excited. It is. Yeah, it is. It is definitely exciting and very, very. It, it just makes you wonder why what why wasn't this a Roger Rabbit sequel? <laughs> On one hand, I mean, yeah, maybe this was the plot because remember how they were gonna make a Roger Rabbit sequel, but yeah. it mostly got shut down for a number of reasons. Um, yeah, the main reason was because of the the close down of Robert Zemeckis' studio after the failure that was Mars Needs Moms, and then hmm. um, another could have been because of um, Bob Hoskins' death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, probably a big reason as well, yeah. And if they so, bring yeah. Back, if they bring back, um, if they were to bring back Roger Rabbit, I mean, the voice of Jessica, Kathleen Turner, she smokes a lot, so her voice is much deeper now, so it wouldn't be the same. Well, mm. it'd be, it'd, it'd probably be easier for her to play the voice, though, compared to, you know, com- compared to her being in a live action movie, because she looks much different than she used to, but... Mm-hmm. Like, I remember when Family Guy made a joke about that. Kathleen Turner, I hear she has a nice... Po- ah, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. And, of course, banking on nostalgia is probably also a big reason why they went with the Risky Rangers. That's not... Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it does sound like they got Charles Fletcher for um, Roger. That was definitely his voice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not the same about Charles Fletcher. Was it would have gotten Jess Harnell. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's like archival archival's uh, voice or if it's actually him like but I know it. he's he's been uh, like he was on board for the sequel so he wants to play the character as much as he can so okay okay well, okay I guess that's all we have to uh, say for now then uh, so uh, thank you guys for watching see you next time have a great day bye bye see ya